What is going on, everyone? It's Sean O'Connell, the managing director here at Cinema Bun, continuing my run through season one of Westworld. We're trying to catch up with all the episodes before we get to season three so that you and I can watch it together. This is my reaction series to the Westworld television show. I've never seen it before. I'm up to episode number four. And what I mentioned at the end of episode three is that it's tough to react to this show in a way because it's not action heavy it's very philosophical there's a lot of dense mythology and um a lot of conversation but um i think we're going to start getting into you know the middle of the season we're at episode four now there's 10 i believe uh, for this first season and that means that the overall big picture story should start shifting into gear so i'm excited to see where it goes however now the uh, title of episode four is called dissonance theory, which makes me think that we're going to get even deeper into the philosophy uh, of Westworld, which makes sense because it's um, based on a Michael Crichton idea, and he loves to blend uh, science and philosophy and psychology and all these deep-rooted things that are probably much smarter uh, than I am, but right now I'm enjoying being along for the ride. Before we do that, you're going to go down and turn on your notifications because hopefully you're enjoying this run through Westworld with me. Maybe you're using it as a way for you to catch up uh, on the previous two seasons before the third one begins, and uh, or maybe you're a newcomer like I am and we're sort of figuring out where the story is going together. So let's dive into dissonance theory and see what's in store for our hosts and newcomers uh, in the deadly park of Westworld, huh? I feel spaces opening up inside of me. Like a building with rooms I've never explored. That's very pretty. And deep. For a host. Is there something wrong with these thoughts I'm having? A little bit. No. Mm, a little bit. Westworld is deep, but it's also a little ponderous. Ponderous. There's something I'd like you to try. It's called the maze. The goal is to find the center of it. If you can do that, then maybe you can be free. Bernard does more damage than good with these conversations. And I have a theory about Bernard that I wanted to bring up in the third episode when I watched his conversation with Shaw. I think either Shaw or Bernard is um, an AI. I think. But then Bernard had that conversation with his family, so I don't think it's him. So I'm thinking, I think Shaw probably died a long time ago. And he's an AI. <laughs> Better pull him off. What? What's the matter, babe? Something in your eyes. Fun part for Tandy Newton to play. It gives her a lot of things to do. Oh, look at that. Wow. No way. No, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. No. That's I madness. would not characterize this as normal host behavior. Do we have any idea what caused it to go off loop? No, but I am hoping to recover some of its causes. Ugh, look at his head. Gross. My team will take over the investigation now. We gotta take her back to Sweetwater. No fucking way. We can't take her on a bounty hunt. Why not? Oh. No, I get it. What? Come on. You might think it's a coincidence that the only thing that you even smiled at back in Sweetwater just happened to drop into your lap. This is why the company needs to bump our stake in this place. You said the trip was about welcoming me to the family. This is business? With our family, William. Everything is business. Also, you give too much credit to the people running the park. <laughs> they don't really know what's going on. It's gorgeous. Westworld falls into the category of uh, a TV show I would totally watch on the big screen you hope to find anyway this whole world is a story i've read every page except the last one i need to find out how it ends i think we found our snake after all you should get the fuck out of here my friend and i were just admiring your tattoo where may i ask are you headed Ooh, look at that tattoo to retrieve something of great value Seems like you got a couple positions open. We've got a host making a pretty big deviation from her loop. Which one? The rancher's daughter from Sweetwater. Flag her with behavior. They can pull her today. 
Morning. And where are you from? Same as you. Don't you remember? Remember. Ooh, look at you, little girl. You're a fascinating little girl. Well, got word a girl went missing from Abernathy Ranch. What's going on here? Oh, just helping a lost traveler. She's not lost, she's with me. She said she'd save me if the information was good. Guess that's the signal. Guess that's the signal. <laughs> ah, I should write for Westworld. Hey, you alright? It's so unusual that they have these memories. They're probably exhausted. Um, I didn't want to intrude, but I just had to say that I'm such an admirer of yours. Your foundation literally saved my sister's life. One more word and I'll cut your throat, understand? This is my fucking vacation. Oh. Apparently, they're what they're looking for is in the old hall prison. All right, at dawn. I'll go get whatever you want out of that prison and bring it back myself. Suppose you make it out alive. What's your price? Nothing but a few words. You ain't to break into a prison and take out 20 men alone. Not alone. I'll take Lawrence here, and I'll need one match. As good as Hopkins gets in this show, Ed Harris is starting to get uh, the equal amount. The, the story of the man in black is one of the most intriguing characters uh, in this entire season so far. Choices, Lawrence. If you did consider your choices, you'd be confronted with a truth you could not comprehend. That no choice you ever made was your own. I'm here to set you free. What does he want to do? Let all the hosts out of the park? Guess where you supposed to be? Your salvation. Well, who's that badass? What turns of fate that brought you here? It's a long story. I want to hear it. We don't have the time. Dang Got it. more time than your friend, sadly. Depth. Well, your friend here simply owes me a word or two. That'd do. I was seven when they rode into my town. They got in my mother from her jaw to her sex. I had to paint her warm blood over my skin to make sure that they would think I was dead. Every one of them I tracked down, I used their blood to paint my skin again. Only one man left. The head of the snake. I most know him as Wyatt. Hmm. But why it's a new character in a story that Ford is just now writing? Do I get a discount for being second and all? I'm sure we can work something out. I think he rides with Hector. Is that the one they say lives out with the savages? That's the one. Have the neighbors complained? Safe to say they're asking questions. <laughs> the rocks would prefer not to move. What is he up to? We shall move from here. As you well know, I have always seen things very clearly. We know everything about our guests, don't we? As we know everything about our employees. I do hope you will be careful with Bernard. Please, don't get in my way. Oof. The board will agree with me. They'll be sending a representative. But they already have. I thought they would have told you. My narrative will be completed on time, and it won't be a retrospective. What's he doing? <laughs> Slap leather cock, suckers. <laughs> Slap leather. <laughs> oh. I should have guessed. 
my boss, El Lazo, he'll pay you twice what the marshal's will. And it, it, if you cut me loose, he'll give me to Pariah. Listen to me, you low hey. down piece of dirt. <laughs> These men won't be. Oh. What the fuck? El Lazo is our ticket to the best ride in the park. Your bullshit mission led us right to an Easter egg. Huh? I feel oh. like I'd be compelled when I got into You're Westworld to, to be a good guy and oh, clean up me clean up the here. town. I'm 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 with William. I would want to go in and try and do good. Well, hello there. I want to talk. I want to know about this. Hmm. This is a shade. Sacred native lore. What is it? The man who walks between worlds. Hmm. You were sent from hell to oversee our world. I thought I was crazy. But I got shot here. And this was standing over me. And then it was as if it never happened. I want you to cut me right there. I think you got her, guys. Okay, this one absolutely qualifies as a peeling back the onion episode of Westworld and the fact that we know the big picture. We know um, that there's park and we know the people are in it. We're starting to figure out their storylines, but there's a lot of um, very specific details that the episode decided it was going to drop. Uh, Logan's family has some investment in uh, the park, ultimately, and he wants to kind of uh, invest more. Dolores gets red flagged for going uh, far off her path, and that's largely because of William and Logan, and we learn more about the family tie that's um, uh, between William and Logan and the fact that they're going to have some um, some sort of, I wouldn't call it a squabble necessarily, but Logan's tr trying really hard to lure William over to the black hat approach to being in Westworld, and I find that to be really fascinating. Also, I was compelled, and I said this during the episode while I was watching it, that if I were to go into Westworld, I really do think that I would try to be someone who tried to clean up the town. And it's funny, it's like you when you go in right before you enter the world, you do get to choose a black hat, white hat type thing, and as I watch people really cave into their animalistic uh, impulses, and you know, you'll get shots every once in a while of, of people just shooting up the saloon for no good reason, other than the fact that they can, that they get away with it a little bit. It caters to those grotesque impulses that we don't act on in a civilized society. And I love that aspect of the show. I think that that's really fascinating to see how the park brings out kind of who you are, right? It's making you a more amplified version of who you are. But then there are um, other major storylines that are going to play out over the course of the Westworld season. And we get a lot more detail into uh, the Man in Black, played by Ed Harris. Um, that's his character. He's trying to get through to the maze. We know that um, we've learned over the course of the other episodes that he's been at this for, for at least 30 years. Coming back to the park, the way that he phrased it was that he's read every page of this story except for the last one. So you get the sense that he's played out every type of storyline uh, and has become obsessed with figuring out how to get to the people who are responsible for the storyline of the park. But there was a really interesting um, bit where the people who were also playing the game, who were part of a mission that he crisscrosses with, recognized him from whoever he is in the outside world. And they want to mention that they are huge fans of his and that his foundation did something really specific, which shows that he has um, a lot of money, a lot of power, a lot of influence, which you would need to have because, again, Westworld, as we learn, costs... $40,000 a day to visit it and here this guy has been revisiting it for 30 years trying to figure out all of its secrets. Um, he very quickly shuts that down, but it's another key piece of information about him that I sort of filed away in my notes and wanted to learn more about. Um, I I'm fascinated also too about Maeve, her being one of the hosts um, who has this recurring loop uh, memory, uh, retaining memories that she shouldn't have. She does dig into uh, the spot where she was shot, realizes that the bullet is still in there. So it proves uh, that the uh, haunting memories that she's having, that the, the great sort of uh, visual of where she tears open the floor and sees that she's drawn that sketch uh, of the technicians who work on her numerous times is really great ways of conveying how the hosts are dealing with what otherwise would be insanity, right? The fact that she keeps reliving this, this uh, horrible dream 
and trying to figure out whether it's right or not. Now, we learn more about Ford and his endeavor, and I, I put this theory out there, um, and it's really, it's a thought that crossed my mind in episode three, and it was when Bernard and Ford were having their conversation about um, Arnold, about his partner. And as I watched that sort of play out, and only just because I kind of know how these stories go, I and I should have said it, I wanted to say it in the moment, but I had a sensation that either Ford or Bernard um, are a clone, are a host, are, are artificial intelligence, are, are robotic, essentially, one of the two. And immediately after that conversation, we saw Bernard have a conversation with his wife where they talked about how hard it was for them to communicate with each other. And, and you know, she said, oh, do you use this as an excuse uh, to get over the fact that they lost a child? So now he lost a child, Um and he seems to have a human connection. So I almost dismissed the fact that, that it's Bernard, but I'm not so uh, convinced that it's not Ford, right? That, that one of the two of them is going to end up becoming a host. I'm, I'm, I'm confident of that. And I'm saying it here in, in episode four. But you learn about his new endeavor. You learn about just how much power he has over the people who think that they're running Westworld. Um, and he basically says, like, stay out of my way. I'm doing this new narrative. Uh, don't worry about my legacy. I'm going to take care of this. And I find it interesting that um, the clues that are pointing uh, the man in black to the entrance to the maze that he thinks he has to attain are characters that we haven't yet uh, seen before, whether it be the the snake tattoo lady and her awesome snake tattoo, uh, or whether it be Wyatt. Um, and Wyatt being a new creation, I think, uh, to forward to the new narrative that he gives. And when uh, the man in black gets closer to Wyatt, he finds Teddy, uh, who, of course, Ford said he was going to give him a new backstory and write him into the narrative. Uh, so Teddy is part of Wyatt. But it's going to ultimately, I assume, build towards this confrontation between the man in black and Wyatt. But it's interesting because, you know, for 30 years, he's been going through these different storylines. The man in black has been going through th these different storylines, trying to figure out all of Westworld. And now it's taking a new character that Ford is introducing, unless I'm missing something there, uh, that's going to essentially lead him to the door of the map or the maze. Um Dolores, the, the, the Dolores storyline is where I find that Westworld moves from being um, engaging to, and I use the word ponderous. Um, and it, again, it's biting off a lot in terms of philosophical discussions of why are we here and who are we really and what are our memories and our dreams. And that's a key element to the show. I understand that it has to be Dolores is going to be the um, the focal point, the stand in. She's going to be one that, that represents those discussions. Sometimes that's where I think that those are the areas where Westworld maybe goes up its own tail. <laughs> I'll say tail uh, to keep it appropriate. But sometimes I think it loses its way in trying to navigate those streams through the Dolores uh, storyline. And it's not to say that she can't be interesting uh, as a character, but when you're pairing her up against uh, what the man in black is trying to, to deduce or what um, Ford and Bernard are wrestling with uh, in the bigger picture scheme of the show. I find myself more interested in that type of stuff, but we'll see where it all goes. Um, this was a good twist for Maeve uh, in this episode as well, too. I really like the fact that that recurring nightmarish loop of her sketching the technicians uh, and then her figuring out how to prove to herself almost that these are not um, the whims of a mad woman and that uh, there's something going on there. So really good episode. Uh, really good. It, this was a good episode in that it was uh, it moved a lot of storylines forward with just enough key detail to keep you uh, engaged while still guessing. And so um, we're going to circle the wagons and come right back for episode five of season one of Westworld. So hopefully you're enjoying these uh, recaps and hopefully I'm helping you guys catch up with season Season one. So head to the comments. Let me know what you think so far of the reaction videos and my interpretation of Westworld to this point. While you're down there, of course, hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, and every single time that we drop a new reaction to a fresh episode of Westworld, you guys will be the very first ones to hear about it.